Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Bart coming to you from TST Industries in Florida with another episode of TST Garage. Today in the shop, I have a Suzuki DR650. This is a bone stock model. It's model year 2021. It is brand new. I think it's got about three weeks of use on it. And the good news is all the previous generations of this bike are virtually the same. I think the bike launched in 1996. It has several different weird nuances in the electrical harness where it'll take a slightly different relay. But for the most part, all the other stuff we're gonna be talking about is virtually the same. For complete information on which years our parts that we will be installing actually fit, please visit our website, tstindustries.com and check out all the ads. They will serve you with the most complete information on application. All right, what are we gonna be doing here? In front of me right here, I have our fender eliminator and integrated tail light combo. As you can see, this bike has all the stock equipment still on it. Big fender, big signals, big weird looking tail light. I like to say it's ugly, but some people may or may not agree. It is functional, but it also looks like it was designed back in 1996. So what we have for you here is a choice of clear or smoked lens integrated tail light that connects via a vehicle specific harness plug and play all the way around signals and tail light connections are plug and play right into the electrical harness so you don't have to do any splicing furthermore on the connection side to our tail light this is plug and play it's a sub harness but we also included pigtails should you choose to not run only the signals that are integrated into the tail light but run some kind of additional external signals like these BL6 signals that we provide on our website. Now, this is just a, just one sample of what we have available. We do have several other types of signals that we sell. So if you're interested in a couple different options, trying to see which ones are right for you, check out tsdindustries.com. Again, we have a lot of really cool stuff for your bike. All right, so like I said, this is a combo. You have your fender eliminator that removes this giant plastic fender and makes very everything very minimal here. You still have the benefit of the uh, bodywork fender to protect you from the splashback from the rear tire. And your license plate is located still back here with the use of our parts. So it's not like you're gonna get a lot more sl splashback if you eliminate that black fender. So just consider that. Here in front of me, I have our combo package. This is the closeout set that goes in place of the actual taillight. You remove the taillight from the top of the fender and this will close it out and make it look really proper. And here you have the components that will actually mount your license plate. So this bracket will be responsible for mounting to the frame in place of the black uh, parts here from the OEM fender. And then subsequently to that, we will mount our tail light. Now, the actual license plate bracket is sandwiched in between this frame bracket and the tail light. What I'm holding here is our standard bracket that is just a static piece. It's made of stainless steel, it's powder coated black, so it sort of disappears and it looks stealthy. We do have a separate option that we offer. Actually, it's a drop down menu variant within the ad for this part. You can actually grab an adjustable setup. So instead of a static fixed angle bracket, you sandwich this part in between the tail light and your frame bracket. And this presents a mount for our adjustable kit. This is just a set of billet aluminum CNC machine parts, black anodized. They involve the installation of two hinge points and a nice flat bracket. And then they enable you adjustability of your license plate hanging angle. And that's basically up to you to adjust to what you like. It is a little bit more costly, but it is much nicer. Some people do opt for that. What we will do in this installation video is show you how to install this standard set and then we will make a small additional video to show you what to do if you chose the actual adjustable kit. 
the adjustable kit actually fits on a lot of our supermoto and enduro model kits so we will just make one universal video to show you just like a little uh, branch method of using all these parts with the exception of this and replacing it with the adjustable kit before we get started with the actual installation i just do want to say uh suzuki engineers decided to make this electrical system on this bike kind of convoluted i want to say maybe a little weird um when you go from oem incandescent light bulbs in the signals you will notice that the bike will flash faster that is very typical on a lot of different bikes and the only way to combat that well th there are two ways really you install uh, load balancing resistors in parallel with each lamp each signal lamp but then you have dangling hot elements and that's just not a very professional way to do things so we do offer a plug and play direct replacement uh, led flasher relay replaces a part that's right under the seat it takes a couple minutes to install it's actually adjustable so you could vary the flash rate to your liking it comes pre adjusted to 85 cycles per minute which is oem rate we'll throw this in during this installation because we don't want to keep this bike flashing fast we will show you what it looks like when it flashes fast and then with the use of this part the other little weird nuance about this uh signaling system on this bike is that suzuki decided to couple the grounding for the signals through the dash light that indicates to you that you're actually signaling so when you go from the incandescent light bulbs that the oem signals use to LED type signals, the little current that gets snuck through, through the indicator light into the other branch of signals actually lights up both sides of the signal. So if you're signaling, you end up having like a hazard light flash. And um, some of the guys on the forums that I read have already experienced this problem, have fixed it with soldering in uh, diodes or wiring them in or whatever. We actually came up with a plug and play kit that goes in line with the dash unit and just fixes that problem for you without having to do any wiring soldering or anything. And this is actually more affordable than what I've seen on uh, the other offerings from the other companies. So we just wanted to make sure that anybody that shops with us has a very nice plug and play uh, approach to everything. And you can get all this stuff installed in less than a day and go enjoy yourself out on the road, in the mud, or wherever you ride. All right, I think that's enough yapping from me. Let's get dirty. Let's start wrenching, come on. In step one, we will be removing this panel here. We'll start with a Phillips head fastener here. It actually takes a pretty large Phillips screwdriver. I'm using a number three. Once the fastener comes off, we advance this panel to the front of the bike to dislodge it from its clips. There's a clip here that interfaces with this geometry and there is a fastening interference feature here that goes onto a peg on the air box. Once that comes off, move on to the left side of the bike and repeat the same process here. Now we have our seat fasteners exposed on each side. I'm going to grab a 12 millimeter socket and remove these fasteners. You know, somebody's going to ask because everybody always does. This is a rotator ratchet available from Stanley. Repeat this same process on this side of the seat. Once those two fasteners are out, we're able to take this seat and advance it towards the rear of the bike to dislodge this and this interference feature from mounting to the tank and under the tank. And now we have our seat off and we've gained access to where all the wiring is. So now that we're here in the wiring compartment, we will need to disconnect some of the lighting components that we will be removing. You're using the tail light just for the tail light and not removing the signals off the bike, then you will not have to disconnect your signal lamps. Here we have our flasher relay unit. That's the factory one. I'm just gonna move it out of the way. I took it out of this boot and move it out of the way so I have more access. 
we have this cable here and this cable here. There are two cables coming in from the back compartment. You could actually trace them up the line. If you pull on the wire coming from your signals, you'll identify it to be this one here and it leads to here. This is your signal connector. It is tied down to the frame with this cable management strap. It is reusable. So I am going to take it off, but then I'm gonna replace it. Typically I leave it hanging and I work around it, but it does carry your spare fuse. So I'm gonna take it off in the interest of not losing the fuse. We'll just replace it later when everything is run and we're ready to reinstall. All right, so we're gonna follow this down to here and unplug this connector, pry up on the locking feature and just pull it out. And let's unroute it all the way back to here. So our right signal is free. Now you have a license plate light on this setup that is also connected via a similar connector. It's just white, same logic, pry up, withdraw, good to go. Signal, black, white for license plate light. All right, now these guys are loose. We could snake them all back towards the rear here. Just be careful not to tug these connectors off. And now we have everything back here. So let's hop on over to the other side and do all the operations necessary for this. Okay, on the left side of the bike, very similar process, but we're looking for slightly different wires. Again, if you can't find the leads that I'm going to show you here, you could tug on the connections to the taillight and the left signal, and then they'll reveal themselves. Our cable management clip here should probably come out. So we'll ease the whole process. And now here aft of your rectifier, there will be three bullet connector sets. These are these guys. And um, once you find them, you can disconnect them. Don't tug on the wires themselves. That's not really good to do. Let's uh, try to grasp at least one side here by the connector. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a tool for this. I don't like to tug by the wires because sometimes if you use too much strength, you could actually pull the wire out of the connector. All right, so these three bullet connectors are actually responsible for the tail light functions, running light and brake. Okay, now that's disconnected. The ones with the males go towards the back. These guys stay here, they're part of the harness. I do not really like how they are wound around from the factory. I'm gonna free them so that they are all on the same side for me for ease of assembly later. I like to have these guys all together. Makes it a lot neater, makes it easier to contain all, all the wires. All right, again, if you are replacing your OEM signals with the signal function in the tail light, you'll have to go up the line here a little bit and find this gray connector. Same logic as on the right side connectors, lift up, pull out, and now carefully snake it through. Now be very gentle around this connection. It does make contact with your rectifier connector. And that is a very important part there. You don't want to dislodge something or possibly strain a wire against a terminal on that connector. So easy does it. And now all these things can be snaked back. And now we have a choice of whether or not to remove this whole top or if we wanna move forward in a slightly less invasive way and work in a cramped space. Now for the purpose of showing you guys this on video, I am gonna remove this because it'll let me illustrate all my steps better. You can possibly get around this, you know, the, the extra disassembly, but 
we're just gonna move stuff around, take it off, and that'll be just simpler. We need a four millimeter Allen from the top. We'll need to remove this screw here. And now these two 10 millimeter fasteners. Now, these bars here, I've seen these bikes out on the road with no bars. Some people replace them with saddlebags, some people keep them, some people just take them off. If you've eliminated these but want some external signals, we do sell separate signal mounting brackets for this particular bike that mount right here where this bolt comes out of. For our installation, what we're gonna do is just remove the signals using a 14 millimeter open-ended wrench here. And we're gonna replace these with our BL6 signals. Like I said in the intro, we have several different options for signals, so choice is up to you. If you actually like other aftermarket signals better than ours, and they are equipped with 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors, and they fit this hole, then you can surely use those as well. I'd like to provide you with the choice and not lock you into just our components. I'm gonna repeat the process here. Now we're getting loose here. Now we'd be able to take this off completely if it weren't for this connection. So we're gonna have to loosen this screw here. I believe it is a 12. So I'm gonna loosen it with a 12 millimeter socket. Do that on both sides. And now I need, I believe a six millimeter Allen. And these we will need to remove completely because we need to have that axial connection out to remove the plastic from up top. Okay, I'm gonna have to find a place to rest this. There we go. All right, we should be free to come out now. This whole assembly comes off in unison and um, we can start working on the tail light right away. Get the tail light off and replace the tail light with our closeout. I'm going to grab my large number three, oof, pretty tight, number three Phillips screwdriver. Get these guys cracked loose here. Each one of these connections has a screw, a washer, and a sleeve inside a grommet. Let's remove all those components. This is what the sleeve looks like when it comes out. Sometimes they just pop out, sometimes they don't. All right. And now our tail light should really just pop off through the top. Just like that. It's just a matter of clearing the connectors through the hole. And we are good to go to install our closeout piece in this area. Okay, this next step will involve the closeout, the taillight closeout portion of this kit, which is three washers, one finishing washer, a countersunk screw, and an M8 flange nut, and the closeout itself. For the purpose of this installation, we will be retaining two of the sleeves that we pulled out of these grommets here. Only two are necessary for this assembly, and uh, we will be using an eight millimeter box wrench along with a three millimeter Allen. So this is the sequence for building these components. You put your finishing washer here, and you know it's a finishing washer when it accepts your countersunk screw, it makes it look flush like this. Flip that over put a washer on top of that, then a sleeve, and a washer, and a sleeve. You have a nice little stack that will fit in here and get spaced appropriately 
for the proper mounting and we insert that into the forwardmost grommet. We put that remaining washer on this connection and then we start the threads with this lock nut. So this connection here does use a lock nut as a fastener. It doesn't have to be super, super uber tight. We just want to make sure that we experience some tightness and that the nylon locking element actually goes over some threads here. And then this is what the finished product looks like. Nicely closed out, cosmetic, nice and sleek. And this is ready to go back on the bike. Let's go back to the bike and remove some of the other components and install our taillight. Okay, now let's remove this black rear portion of the fender. There's one remaining cable management clip here. I'm gonna undo that, drop the wire. And then we have two fasteners that have a 10 millimeter head. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to remove those. This cable management clip actually comes off with the fastener. Now there are two more in the rear portion here on these tabs that stick out of the rear of the frame. They are also 10 millimeter head. Once we loosen the last one, this fender should technically start sagging unless it's got some kind of a maybe interference fit. There we go. As soon as I take that screw off, it's going to come down. All right, I'm going to remove that and put it to the side. Now in this step, we will be attaching the main frame bracket to the frame here little slots here for adjustability just in case after your installation you notice that it's a little lopsided you can always crack them loose and uh, slide them around till you like where tail light sits and then lock it in place for this connection each side is going to receive this 60 millimeter long m6 screw with one of these m5 heads uh, m5 allen heads put a washer over it and screw it in from the bottom. Before we do this, I urge you to use a Loctite or thread locking compound on this connection. Now from the factory, this doesn't come uh, Loctited. I do think that on these thumper bikes, you have a lot of vibration to consider and we wanna make sure that we don't lose screws due to vibration, so I always like to use a thread locking compound in here. This is a medium thread locking compound. I would say no less than medium. You can go with high strength. It's just a pain in the butt to remove it later. So I usually opt for medium. Start my threads by hand, then use a five millimeter Allen to get them bottomed out. I do like to distribute my thread locking compound. And for now, what I'm gonna do is get a little snug and basically eyeball it to be center using this tab and this tab from the frame ear as reference. Like I said, later on, you could always change that, but this will get us really, really close, I believe. Let's tighten these down. I really like to leave thread locking compounds sitting out. So I'm gonna clean off the excess here. This stuff is fairly corrosive, so we'll remove that. All right, next I will be taking my sub harness and distributing it here. Lay it softly on the frame, get it routed a little bit, just to see what we're working with. The male bullets and signal plugs go towards the inside here. I do like to route through here. That is the stock routing area. I 
I'll try to mimic the same kind of routing that the factory had for our wiring systems. Making sure that we don't have one of the wires come out longer here. I'm gonna take up the slack up in the front until everything's nice and even. And the bulk of this sheathing should be really in the rear area up in this compartment. You don't really need that much shielding back here. It's fairly important. So now we have ample length of the front facing wires to get plugged in here. And we have our signals. One will go to this side, one will go to this side. Let's leave it at that and grab our tail light. For this particular installation, I've chosen the clear because when it's shut off, it has a frosted white look to it because we textured it and that kind of goes along with the white panels of this bike. We also have the smoked one if you're going for a more stealthy look. This is really up to you. They both are pretty close in brightness. All right, so our taillight will go here. So we will have to route the wire here. As you can see, we are gonna have a little bit of slack here. So that's good. These three holes, except the three self-threading plastic plastite screws. And like I mentioned in our intro, you either sandwich this bracket, that is the fixed angle bracket in between the tail light and the frame bracket. Or if you've chosen the adjustable setup, at this point, you would use this bracket, but this bracket would already have the actual adjustable fender eliminator built on it. I will show you that in a different segment, but this is the place where you would actually sandwich this in here. So I'm gonna grab this guy. There is a notch for the grommet here. And the same notch exists in the frame bracket here. I'm gonna align this stuff and start threading in my self-threading screws. I get all three in by hand, start the thread. Obviously you won't be able to go too, too far into the threads because they have to be cut by the actual fastener. So just get it snug and then we'll grab a Phillips head screwdriver and continue turning those in. These screws require a much smaller screwdriver head. I have a number two here. Just gonna continue turning that in. Now, this bracket set is also slotted, but in the vertical direction. So this will enable you to fine tune the hanging height of the license plate and also your tail light. And what I like to do is start in the highest position. And then if we have too much interference from the fender, I'm gonna bring that down later. So I'm just gonna pull this all the way up and tighten it all the way down. And quick note about these trilobular self-threading screws. You get them to the bottom, you get them snug, they don't go anywhere past that. They keep in the plastic by friction. We have sold thousands of these setups and nobody has problems with them getting lost or anything. They do sit in there with friction, no big deal, good to go. All right, let's see. I'm gonna route this through here and under here, and we're gonna use the cable ties that were provided with the kit to route this stuff. I like to put one here, and I'm gonna cinch it up just a little bit, but still leave it loose. And then for now, I'm just gonna leave this here or actually we could actually plug this in right now it'll keep itself steady for us i would say do not plug anything in just yet let me tell you about what to do about these all right let's quickly talk about a license plate light by default we do not include license plate lights in our fender eliminator kits because some people like different solutions than what we have and we don't 
make you eat the cost of something you may not want. We do provide a separate unit that is very low cost. It's very low profile, kind of meant to disappear behind the license plate. And it comes with two little connectors that you can choose to use. They're very easy to use and they're reusable and it's easy to disconnect and reconnect. I'll show you how to use these. You can also opt to uh, chop off a little bit of the connection from the OEM fender that has your OEM plug and wire them, solder them or wire them directly into here. And that's also a very good solution. This is a separate kit, but I will be providing this for this particular bike and I will show you how to install it because at this point, if I don't install it, then I would have to undo a bunch of stuff. So we're gonna combine a few installations here and you guys just use the steps that are necessary. I'll feed this through the center slot of the bracket and just leave it hanging there. And then we're just gonna use the same cable management points that we've set up here. All right. And for now, we can just leave it hanging. This actually gets sandwiched between the license plate bracket and the license plate. And the only thing you see is an actual light head sticking out. So let's leave it hanging. I'm gonna get a little bit more tightness, but still loose, allowing some adjustability and uh, We'll pick up in the next step. Here's a quick note before we move forward. We do supply this damper pad made of foam for the top of the headlight. It's meant to contact the fender. Now you may be inclined to put it on in this step at this stage. I would urge you to wait until we get through the rest of this and then mock it up when the fender's coming back on. So let's couple this up with the fender and put it to the side and let's now make our connections, test the taillight, test the signals, and move forward. If you are inclined, if you've chosen to use aftermarket signals on your setup, this pigtail here will enable you to just plug and play connect them. If you've opted to just use the signals built into the capsule of the taillight, then you see these insulators here they like to fall off from the actual metal contacts and that can cause this to ground out, cause a short, blow a fuse, and then you'll no longer have lighting on your bike till you replace the fuse and then it can happen again. So if you are not using any of these connections, you're gonna have to tape them off. Make sure that these insulators stay on top of the contacts. You can basically fold them over, wrap them up with electrical tape, and then wrap it up with electrical tape to the shielding like so, and you'll be good to go. We are choosing to install our BL6 signals for this particular installation, so I will now show you how to install those. Again, this is a separate kit. We sell everything in modules. You can choose to buy it or not. You could actually use any aftermarket signal that has 3.5 millimeter bullets on this connection and should be good to go. If you are using the BL6, you're gonna have to first identify which way these go. They are directional. The top does have a half round here. The bottom is flat. And the surefire way of knowing that it's in the right direction is if you could read TST Industries upright, that's the way to go. All right, so this is a left signal. We are gonna pre-install it here on this hole where we took out previous OEM signals. This nut is a 12 millimeter size. And get all these washers and the nut off the kit of the wires. Pass the wires through the mounting holes. And all of these washers go on this side. So first we have the flat washer. Then we have the split washer. And then the nut. At this point in our installation, these brackets are still loose, so we will not be tightening this down all the way. This is just for place holding. 
we will tighten them up after we adjust them at the very, very end of this installation. So I just get them finger tight. All right, let's wire up our signal connections here. For that purpose, I will be suspending our signals on these brackets in the correct place for where they're gonna be hanging. I'm gonna put this hardware back in and tighten up on the rear hardware a little bit by hand just so that we have the actual placement where they go. If you are retaining these brackets or if your bike still has them and you wanna run these signals here, then please note that you'll have to run them under the frame and then over here on this side under the frame and up towards the front and this is because your fender is going to lay down on here and the fender has a flanged surface that fits over this tube if you put this here now you'll have interference and that's no good if for some reason you've ditched these or your bike doesn't have them and you're making use of our pod signal mounting kit for this bike it goes and gets connected to here mechanically and then your wire ends up being somewhere around here so again you go under and up through here on both sides and that will get you a nice fit all right so let's let's do that this is the right one the yellow wire from the right signal lamp goes to the brown wire on the on our loom gets connected and the little sheath gets slid over as you can see it is does have a little bit of freedom. So I will be locking this down with electrical tape for the reason of not moving and not causing a short circuit. And then also so that water doesn't penetrate in there. On the black side, it's just black to black, nice and easy. Same thing, we'll be throwing some tape over that. Here you see I already have the left signal under and run towards the front, yellow to green. And then black to black. I'll grab some electrical tape and lock these guys down. What I like to do is prioritize the positive side of the connection. So I will make sure that this insulator is advanced all the way over the male bullet connection and then lock it down in place. Then I'm going to hop on over to the other side and do the same with the wire that has yellow. That's the positive connection. The reason why I prioritize positive is because the negative wires, the ground wires, are basically the same as frame. All the ground on the bike is common, so we don't really need to prioritize that. Now, positive is already locked down. I'm going to make sure that negative is also slid over, and then I'm going to throw a couple windings of electrical tape on that make sure it's nice and tight when it's tight water doesn't penetrate in here and then we have a nice connection with longevity and it also looks professional repeat the process on the other side connection can now connect to the front of the bike and test all our connections bef before we go any further. All right, blue goes into the gray wire. That's our running light. You can watch through this sleeve here, making sure that you actually engage this bullet connector. And uh, these here are formed really well. And we also supply our connectors with a secondary sleeve that goes in there. These aren't going anywhere. They're not locked down with tape from the factory, so I'm confident just leaving it in this state after installation. Black with white trace to our black, and then white with black trace to our yellow. Okay, once these are all engaged, we make sure that these sleeves have been fitted together. That keeps water from going in there and we can just jam them in here underneath, basically where the OEM setup was sitting. They were all 
kind of pushed into this compartment here just behind the rectifier and now we could also stow the excess of the green wire in there and just pull out what we need to make our connection here on the side i believe we were routed under all this stuff we can keep that routing seems to be the best way to go we'll make this connection here and then stow it away make sure we leave this wiring in the same state that it was in when we found it okay now let's hop on over to the other side get that other one situated right signal lead we'll have to go across the top of the battery here that's the easiest routing under the ecu and now we reach this area here plug it in and let's stow the excess i just like to make sure that i don't have wires getting snagged on anything here that looks really nice I have this dangling here. What I'm gonna do is make use of the OEM rubber keeper. I'm gonna push my relay through here. I don't like to keep it up that way because then water can accumulate in this connector. So I'm gonna push it onto this rubber keeper. Okay, so I'm doing it with a tab inboard. That seems to be producing a better result for me. Plug it in and stow it away, and we'll be done in this compartment. It's really nice. All the wiring is tucked away. Everything looks professional. I believe we did loosen up a cable tie here. I'm gonna replace that now. Good to go here. Okay, now that we've made our connections, I'm gonna go ahead and test the system, make sure that we actually have functionality. I don't wanna go any further and start slapping parts back on without having proper functionality. That's the right signal. This is the left signal. As you can see, it's flashing much faster than an OEM rate of 85 cycles per minute. This is because it's drawing much less current than the OEM signals and the signaling system on this bike is actually meant to alert you that something is out of spec by signaling faster. Now, we do have two signals connected on each side already along with the OEM front. So we are still drawing a good amount of current from the system. If you change the front signals to LED as well, this will increase in speed and then it'll probably be very annoying because you'll have a light switch rave on the back of your bike front of your bike it'll be confusing to drivers that are watching you as to what you are trying to do so for that purpose i would say we can switch this guy out already we have our flasher relay that basically replaces the oem relay here and it's a very simple modification you unplug this plug this in and now we'll go back to 85 cycle per minute, per minute flash rate, regardless of what kind of lamps you got hooked up. Whether you have a mixture of OEM and LED or purely all LED, you'll still flash at 85 cycles per minute. We do have a separate video showing the full installation of just this unit and also how to adjust it. There is a small potentiometer on board there. We'll show you how to get that done. For now, I'm just gonna leave it plugged in so that we are legit here in case you've changed all four signals, all four signal positions on this bike to LED type, so front and rear. Now both sides are gonna flash simultaneously. That's what our diode mod is for. And we'll also have a separate video showing you how to install that. At this point, we're going to do some cable management and routing. 
We have the one remaining cable strap that came with our kit. We have the replaceable cable management strap that we took off the bike. And we also took off this tab and a screw from one of these connections here. I wanna make use of all these components. This guy goes back in here. We're gonna adjust this a little bit later and tighten it down. I'm just gonna get it hand tight. Okay, I'm going to use this long remaining strap somewhere over here, making sure that I've captured all of these wires. Again, I'm not going all the way tight. I'm leaving some adjustability. We do have quite a little bit of adjustment to do still before we are fully finished here. So I do like to keep this stuff kind of adjustable. Just like to make sure that things are tight to the frame but still have enough slack here. All right. I'm not really sure if I should put this last one on just yet. This will be easy enough to do with the fender in place from, from underneath. We'll just slip it on there and finalize it then. All right. I think at this point, pretty much ready to go to the next step. Now that's all looking nice. My license plate light wire is routed the same way. You can see it here reaching easily this connector here. If we were to use the provided connectors for means of connection, we unscrew the bottom cap from the larger diameter, we place that around the wire we want to connect to, and here on the license plate light connection, the, the brown is positive, black with white trace is negative. We place the wire in the slit and there's a piercing element here. As you turn this onto the threads on the bottom of the connector, that pierces it and now it makes your connection and then you undo this top. You place the wire you wanna connect through the larger diameter, have it stick out from the bottom of the threaded component and just thread that on now you see me connecting the red to the brown. That's because red is the positive lead. Black is the ground. As this gets threaded down, it clamps this connection together. And then we give it a little tug, make sure it's connected, and that would be good to go. I'm actually going to choose to make a slightly different connection here. I just wanted to show you guys how to use the connectors that we send with the license plate light in case you don't have the other side of the loom for this. I find it a little nicer to grab some of this here with the connector and actually connect this to our license plate light and then you have a pluggable solution here. Snip a little bit of it off. I'm going to strip a little bit of this wire. We're going to have to have more exposed wire on this side of the connection, so we're going to strip a little bit more. And now you can use your favorite method of connection. I know some guys out there will want to do heat shrink tubing over soldered parts for something that draws about 15 milliamps like this license plate light. I feel it's really adequate just to twist them together and insulate them really well. When you have this long a conductor on each side and you twist them together and you insulate them, that connection will not break for at least 15 years. So I have done this many, many times with success. Now in order to not introduce bulk, I'm gonna insulate them separately and then bend one one way, bend one the other way, and then insulate on top and we'll be good to go.
Okay, we have a nice tight package here. Water should not be getting in there at all. Let's plug it in, test it before we move forward. And in fact, we do have light coming from the license plate light. We're good to go. I am going to take up the slack here from this license plate light wire, making sure that we don't have slop at the bottom. Leave just a little bit down there. We want to have a little adjustability in case we need to move that license plate bracket up and down. But now, we seem to be good to go here. And we can finally start turning some screws in, putting some parts back on, and uh, then this bike will be ready to go. I'm gonna finalize my zip tie connections here. Now let's grab our rear fender and attempt to mount it with all this stuff in place. I mentioned before that this foam is gonna get adhered here, making sure that we have a nice damped connection. So that will have to happen. We also have to undo these connections here so we could slip our fender over. And finally, let's get our fender on. Now, there is an accepting channel here on each side that goes onto this sub tray mud guard. And then this piece fits in between the mud guard and the frame. And that has to be kind of put together simultaneously. Now we need to ensure that this boss from the frame protrudes through the fender on each side. And we can replace these screws through the brackets. Just get them hand tight. We'll tighten them up later. Just making sure I have a, enough slack here to actually get these signals straight. When I've accomplished that, I'm just gonna get these guys down a little bit more. Now that our fender's on, as promised, we will have to place this piece of foam onto the taillight making sure that we have proper spacing and during riding vibration, the fender doesn't actually impact the light and wear into it. So I basically just place my foam on top of the tail light until I have a tiny, like a two millimeter gap. It's roughly a 16th of an inch. And then I will lift up on it and see where that landed. And you can probably see more or less where that landed. So I'm gonna take off the masking strip. This does have double-sided adhesive on it. And I'm gonna place my foam where I had it mocked up. Get this back down, make sure that that gap is still the same. We're looking good. All right, let's grab the fasteners that fasten the tail to the bike. Let's start with these two here. Tighten all these guys down. I'm gonna to switch to a 12 millimeter and tighten down these brackets, in both of their connections here and here. Now I'm gonna grab my Allen key and tighten these connections down. All right. Now using a 12 millimeter open-ended wrench, I'm gonna tighten down on the connection for the signal to the frame and attempt to set it nice and level with the ground and also not off angle with the center plane of the bike. Now, what's difficult about this is that I noticed these brackets are not exactly parallel to the center plane of the bike. I'm gonna attempt to adjust this as best I can and uh, we'll just see if I can make that happen. Now, the rubber interface for the bracket is just a little bit bigger than the hole for the OEM signal. So that's also gonna make it slightly difficult, but once we lock it in place, that, that rubber is gonna deform to fit into that hole and we should be good to go. Now, once you find the position that works for you and it looks 
parallel with the ground, nice and perpendicular to the center plane of the bike. You gonna have to lock this down now. You don't want to over tighten this connection because it could result in ripping out the metal component, metal fastening component from the over molded rubber stud. So we're going to close the gap on the split washer and preload this connection a little bit. And that's as far as we're going to go. The friction between the rubber and the metal bracket will keep it in place. And we just repeat the procedure on this side of the bike. Okay, the next step will be to jack this thing up and perform our final wire routing and take up the slack and we'll be good to go. I'm going to put my license plate back in place here just to make sure I, when I go to do up my wires together, take up the slack, I have it in the right place and I don't have anything drooping. Most bikes from the dealership or, you know, if you have a bike, you have to have a license plate on it. So technically, we just assume that you have this hardware or some kind of hardware to hold your license plate light, to hold your license plate. We do not supply these sets of hardware by default with fender eliminators, but if you need a set of hardware, these are inexpensive. We do carry them in case yours is broken or something like that. Nice and center. And you saw me basically just clamp this license plate light between the bracket and the license plate. We do have a strip of high bond 3M tape behind there. In case you're one of those guys that worries about stuff coming apart, you can choose to take the masking off of it and stick it to the back of your license plate. It'll be on there permanently. I typically just use it as a friction pad between the license plate and the license plate light. That's been working for me many, many years since I designed the license plate, uh, since I designed the license plate light. All right, now it's time to take up the slack here and all these wires, make sure everything's tied down, tightened down on this cable management clip, and then we should be good to go. First, I'm going to position this cable management clip where I want it. I think I want it right there. That looks pretty good. It requires that 10 millimeter head. All right, now we have that extra removable cable clamp that we took off from the OEM setup. I'm gonna put it up here by the main plug. Make sure that I have all the excess tucked away, but you like nice, neat cable connections. Now I'm going to clamp down, pull down as tight as I can on this rearmost one that we put in early on in the install and that is keeping my wires in the aft section here, nice and close to this package. I'm gonna cut off the excess. Now this guy I got already pretty tight. I'm just gonna make sure it prevents any motion on these wires. We want just a little bit of slack here, but not too, too much. You don't want this drooping under this assembly because it'll look funky from the side, but you don't want it too, too tight. If you're so inclined and you have extra cable, cable ties, you can tie off to this frame component here. This will just ensure that you don't have too much drooping from the side and it all looks good. Let's perform the last couple steps and get this bike ready to roll off the lift here. I'm gonna re-engage the seat making sure that both the bottom and the top is engaged. As you can see, I slipped off up here. All right.
in the disassembly, I showed you guys the two areas that need to be engaged. This one's fairly simple. The forward one is not as, it's not as obvious. So I'm gonna align all this here and look up here and make sure that I engage that little peg that protrudes from front of the air box. And then once all this is aligned, put our screw in and then we are going to repeat this process on the left side of the bike. And at the very end of each install, I like to make sure everything that I've installed is actually functioning properly. We have running light, brake light, right signal, left signal, and we are good to go. All right, you guys, check it out. The results really speak for themselves. I love the way this kit makes the back of the bike look. And if you agree, check out tscindustries.com. You'll find these parts there, as well as some other parts for this bike and other bikes you may have in your stable. Now, quick note, we do take pride in making really, really detailed videos. So the installation that you just witnessed here actually takes a little bit less time if you don't have to contort yourself and show all the different camera angles that we have to show to show it in detail. So don't fear uh, the installation process. Just follow along and you should be successful. Thank you for watching. See you at tscindustries.com.